Graham Bradley, productivity is a bit like the weather. Everyone talks about it, no one does anything about it. What role do CEOs have to advance productivity in their own organisations? Uh, they have a major role because they really are the guardians of corporate culture. And if there is a culture in the organisation that focuses on innovation uh, and productivity and business improvement, then uh, you know, you'll find uh, good ideas welling up within organisations. I think it's important for boards as well to uh, emphasise the importance of uh, innovation and productivity and to do things to highlight it within organisations so that it's something that all employees uh, will relate to and celebrate. But the second thing which CEOs need to do, particularly in the current environment in Australia, is to highlight the uh, areas where we can improve on the regulatory framework in the country. We do now have a government committed, as many have been in the past, to a deregulation agenda, uh, but I do think there's a genuine will uh, to do something about the excessive regulation that's accumulated over many decades. Um, and this is an opportunity, I think, for companies to speak up, put their case studies forward, and highlight the areas where we have inefficient regulation that's inhibiting not only their own business productivity, but actually the national productivity. That sets a number of hairs running. Just from the CEO point of view, though, what concrete examples are there of what they should be doing? Uh, Michael, sometimes it's a case of necessity is the mother of invention. And when the chips are down and when companies are facing financial crises or business crises uh, or, or their business has been dislocated by disruptive technology, then you'll find companies will respond quite creatively in many cases with uh, innovation uh, and productivity improvements. But it shouldn't be a case of um, waiting for a crisis, as it shouldn't be with fixing the national uh, balance sheet either. Uh, we should be uh, in companies constantly looking uh, for ways to improve productivity and to innovate. And uh, you know there are many examples of companies that have been uh, deliberate about the way they have nurtured disruptive uh, challenge to their existing businesses. The famous case, of course, is uh, Jack Welsh at General Electric, who hired uh, 20-somethings to tell his managers in every one of his businesses how uh, they could go about destroying the business through the application of new technologies. That's an extreme example of a company that took the threat of, uh, of innovation, uh, uh, obsoleting their businesses very seriously. Extreme example, but a good one for other companies to learn from. Now, every government starts with good intentions. It does, and, and nothing is uh, more difficult uh, to actually implement than commitments to roll back regulation and over-regulation. Um, it starts with, a, I think, a, uh, firstly, a cultural mindset that says there are lots of ways to fix problems in the community, and perhaps regulation and new laws should be the last of those options, not the first. So it, it does start from taking seriously the notion of looking for alternative ways to solve problems, looking for self-regulatory ways. Uh, a good example would be rather than legislating on so many of the things we've impo imposed on corporate governance in Australia in recent times, they could have been uh, implemented through the ASX uh, corporate governance principles, which are a disclosure-based uh, requirement. Uh, and, and a non-legislative requirement, but nevertheless, uh, to all accounts, a very effective way to uh, encourage companies to perform better in governance uh, areas. Uh, but so making, making regulation and new laws the last rather than the first resort is one thing, but then actually addressing the stock of, of uh, over-regulation uh, is, a, is a huge challenge. Uh, at least there's a focal point for that in the new government's commitment to actually dedicate days of parliament exclusively for repeal. There's a lift in business confidence with the new government. How long do you think the honeymoon lasts? Well, I think it lasts as long as we see continued stability um, in, uh, in government policy. One of the things that's impacted um, Australia significantly, I think, over the last six or seven years has been the constant changes, uh, many of them unheralded and um, uh, not subject to sensible industry consultation that have undermined what used to be uh, our strong and um, gold standard reputation is a very reliable uh, place for uh, foreigners to invest in. Uh, Australia needs continued foreign uh, direct investment uh, and we need to have stable policies, rules, tax laws and so on to, uh, to encourage that again. To what extent did that lost decade of flat productivity growth come about because 
we simply didn't need to work too hard at it. Things were good, money rolled in, why work harder? Well, to some extent, that's the cycle. Uh, companies will uh, focus on productivity when margins uh, fall uh, and when uh, sales decline. Um, it's, uh, it's the way of the world, but uh, on the other hand, uh, what boards and CEOs need to be on guard against is the complacency that can come from prosperity. Um, and uh, in the boards that I sit on, we start to worry most when we think everything is going well. Uh, and I think there's a need to bring that sort of scepticism and over-the-horizon thinking that uh, uh, to, to um, current management, which will be, of course, consumed with fulfilling strong order books. Uh, but that's exactly the time when boards need to say, now let's take stock, let's put some time aside, let's look over the horizon, let's think about the future, let's have some people come in and challenge us about what could go wrong next uh, in our business um, and, uh, and start to build that into the strategies. How much of the cultural change can be top down? How much of it does it have to be a full team effort? Well, I think it's both, um, uh, but uh, really uh, the tone is set from the top. Uh, it's a case of what do boards ask of their CEOs and their management team, what sort of signals they're sending, what kind of stories they talk about, what kind of examples they choose to make, uh, to make uh, prominent uh, in their decision making, and the signals that sends down to the organisation. I think one of the things that's underestimated is how powerful uh, simply what is asked and what is discussed can be because that will filter down right through the executive team. Uh, if they get probed on culture, for example, or innovation at the boardroom, the, the, question, the, 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 the message will soon get down there that, you know, I better go prepared uh, for, to answer those questions. Nothing's more powerful than what is asked. If I could give you a, uh, an example from um, uh, the great uh, turnaround in the culture uh, and, uh, and security of uh, New York City under Mayor Giuliani. Um, the way he uh, tackled the crime problem in New York was simply getting his precinct police heads to front up every Monday morning and ask, what has happened in your precinct in the last week and what are you doing about it? Right? And being put on the spot like that meant that the, uh, the police chiefs didn't feel they could go to that meeting with their peers and not have some very good answers about what they were doing to preempt or avoid or fix the crime problem in their precincts. And that simple management technique actually was probably the most important thing in cleaning up New York City's crime problem. So I, I use that as an example of what boards need to think about in the signals they send uh, through their management, of course, into the organisations around this very important issue of productivity. So there's the potential to come out of what has been a, a pretty mild slowdown in markedly better shape, more profitable? I, I do think so. Uh, balance sheets are in good repair. Uh, Australian companies are by and large well capitalised now. Uh, there's no shortage of superannuation money available to provide capital for growth. Um, and in general, companies have had to streamline their workforce and focus on improved uh, service and, uh, and uh, training uh, in order to improve service and productivity. So I think actually once growth returns in the Australian economy over the next few years, is, as it should, absent a, a further global dislocation, uh, we ought to see a, a very rapid return to good productivity statistics. To what extent has corporate Australia lost perspective? Every visiting businessman comes here can't believe how negative we are about our own economy. Yes and no. Uh, I hear that too. Um, we've done relatively well uh, compared to many uh, other OECD countries, but I think it's too low a bar for us to be complacent about. Many of the OECD economies are, of course, the struggling states of Europe. And I no longer think they're our national competition. We should be comparing ourselves with the high growth states in our region, the Singapores, the Malaysias, the Chinas, um, and even now a resurgent Japan. Uh, so I think we've got to reset our, our uh, targets when it comes to what we're aspiring to achieve. And I think we should look more closely at the economic success stories of Hong Kong, of Singapore, the countries to our north, which we've so often ignored for political reasons or for ignorance reasons. And I've, uh, I'm very encouraged to see uh, federal politicians uh, visiting those states and truly understanding what they've done to create a productive uh, and wealth-creating uh, business community.